You say you want to be a day trader. You want to trade ICT and yet you're going to click off this video in 30 seconds. Give me a break. Um, hello everyone and welcome to the London session. We are trading Top Step Trader. Uh, the last video that I published called Live Futures Trading NQ Pre-London Session. Um, I decided to go ahead and age restrict that. Uh, I was pretty worked up and uh, I used a lot of profanity and so I went ahead and decided to uh, age restrict that out of you know respect. So here we are. Okay guys, uh, let's give you the trade setup. Before I do that, um, I am trading a Top Step Trader simulated account, step two. This is a grandfathered account. If you would like to trade with Top Step Trader LLC, uh, my affiliate link is in the description box below. They are running a massive sale, so I would ask that you uh, use the affiliate link that is in the description box. So we are trading a step two account, which uh, this is a grandfathered account, so it no longer um, exists. Step two no longer exists, but lo and behold, I'm still here. Uh, we have to make it to $159,000. Um, and that's, that's our remaining objective. This may be the day that gets us there. It could be tomorrow. It might be the next day. So what's the trading setup here? Well, as you know, uh, I'm focusing on trading the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ is pretty much all I look at. Uh, we'll sometimes come here and look at the dollar index. Dollar index looks like it came down to a buy side uh, inefficiency. We have a high, low. If this makes a higher high, that would be potentially a bearish breaker. So let's get back to the NASDAQ. Um, we have a bearish breaker pattern. So we have leg A to leg B and then uh, push into liquidity and then we're starting a movement downwards. So from point A to point B I have put our standard deviations lower and see if they line up with any other targets and as we can see that 1331 sorry 331 halves down here below these equal lows that's a liquidity target. It's also the midway point here the consequent encroachment of this BISI. So we have a numerous factors that suggest that my buy limit should be filled and I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you. Standard deviation projections off a bearish order block. Rejection from an order block. Rejection from a SIBI. Equal lows. Liquidity target. Unfilled. Inefficient. Uh, so buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency that has not been repriced. So there are and standard devi deviation projections from, uh, from our breaker block, which is advanced breaker block theory, right? Our standard deviation projections, just like I talked about in the advanced gap theory, right? So those are what we're looking at. First found you look. Advanced breaker block theory is going to be in the uh, first pinned comment. Quick disclosures, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Trading features of Forex involves substantial risk of loss, including more than you initially invest. Do not trade funds that you uh, cannot afford to lose. The following is simulated trading on a simulated account and may not represent live market conditions. Legal disclaimer, I am not your attorney. I do not represent you. I am not soliciting you for legal services. Okay. Here we are. We're in the London session. And our Frankfurt Stock Exchange just opened right there one minute ago. I'm using advanced breaker block theory and standard deviation projections along with liquidity targets, which suggests that price should come lower at this time. A 
We will see, however, we will see. So let me show you my previous trades from the Asian session. So you can see we were going long. I thought we were going to draw up to this liquidity. We did not. So we were long three contracts from down here and we took some off up here and now we went short. So let me show that one more time. You can see that I was long one, 346 halves, long a couple more. And then if you look up here, prior to going short, uh, this is where I was covering out those longs. So uh, we're currently sitting up about 500 on the session. About 500. Guys, we are trading with the theories and the models presented by Michael Huddleston, a.k.a. Inner Circle Trader. Specifically, we're using advanced breaker block theory liquidity targets and inefficiencies. Uh, in addition to that, we're using a reclaimed new week opening gap, which we can see was back here. Price comes back down to that same price level, that new week opening gap. It's going to be reclaimed, meaning traded back to again. So numerous models suggest that we should be coming lower. We have new week opening gap, uh, standard deviation projections from an, uh, from a breaker block, high, low, higher, high. Uh, we have order block over here. That's an order block right there. Okay, so midpoint of that. Order block theory, breaker block theory. This is a type of order block. New week opening gap theory. Equal lows, draws on liquidity theory. It's all there, guys. It's all there. Um, but you can continue to go watch uh, your 10-minute primer videos from T-Trades, who's a good guy, but you can continue to go watch uh, those, and that's totally fine. See how far you get. See if not putting in the work gets you there, guys. So, I'm going to add on one more contract short and just do a full pull. see if uh, we get to 159 there. This might be a short video. 159 is funding. Again, 159 is an express funded account with Top Step Trader with whom I am affiliated. Please use my uh, referral link. So, uh, let's see if we can get to funding with this trade. I, I don't think the math checks out. I think we are going to be short of it with this. But, um, we're closer. I'm of the opinion that this is a fairly high probability trade. I'd put it up there around the 70% range. The purpose of this channel is to show you my journey into professional day trading. Um, it's my dream to become a professional day trader and this channel is a video recording of that. We are using Top Step Trader funding to get there. And um, it's going to be a journey. But I think we can get there. 
Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to grow that YouTube audience. Leave the video running. So, uh, we just had an immediate rebalance. What is an immediate rebalance? When the price comes, it makes what would be a SIBI and then immediately redelivers it. That should be a good sign, that immediate rebalance. Uh, reading the tea leaves, that should be a good sign. Guys, one of my favorite tools uh, with ICT are these standard deviation projections. And there's multiple models with which to use standard deviation projections, including uh, advanced gap theory. Again, that's advanced gap theory. And uh, we're not using that right now, but um, I have a video on advanced gap theory using uh, breakaway gaps, measuring gaps, And in addition to our breaker block standard deviation projections, uh, you can use a measuring gap as well, if you have it, if, if price offers you a measuring gap. Not oh, So let's see if we have any, no, that was closed out. That could be a breakaway gap right there. That inefficiency up there at 352 spot 50, price has let that remain open, so that's a good sign. We're on a five-minute chart, guys. We're on a five-minute chart. We're looking to come down into these, into this liquidity target. We're looking to come down into this uh, BISI inefficiency. We're looking to come reclaim new week opening gap. All of those are ICT models. They are not mine. They're not. They're not my creation. But I'm a student. I'm a student, and I'm happy to learn from my mentor. Michael Huddleston. Using standard deviation projections, advanced breaker block theory, new week opening gap theory, liquidity theory, and inefficiency theory. Using all of those things, all those models. And they're all showing uh, that this should be a good trade. There's some other models at play here, including Turtle Soup. Maybe three drives pattern. Right? One, two, three. Definitely we can see down here on the four minute chart. Yeah, you can see that that inefficiency right there. Going to give you some advanced gap theory. See how price has left that purple box remain open? That's a good sign. That's probably a measuring gap right there. Let's see if we can get another um, model to confirm. Advanced gap theory, assuming that is a measuring gap, we leave that open. Use our standard deviation box from that. Clone the box. Okay. It's two standard deviations from the measuring gap. So it takes us exactly to 326 spot 25. And I, I gotta do this for myself, guys. I gotta I gotta see if it goes exactly there. I have to. I have to see if it goes exactly there. I really do. So, every day I am shocked the accuracy that some of these models have. I mean, Lord willing, I've never seen anything like, I mean, Lord above, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, Y'all can choose to believe it or not. The good Lord knows that I believe. I've seen things on these charts. I've seen accuracy that cannot be explained by randomness, in my opinion. I don't think that the world is ever really going to believe it. 
but um, I do. It is all mathematics, guys. It's all mathematics. Standard deviations are a ma mathematical model. It's mathematics, which is what the trading algorithms operate off of. So, um, what are the two purple boxes? That's advanced gap theory. So, breakaway gap up here, measuring gap, and then measuring two standard deviations lower. What are the red Fibonacci lines? That are those are standard deviation projections from a breaker block. What is a breaker block? It is a high, low, higher high that should push into liquidity. This one ran on a rejection block, so it's okay. It's not. It did run above this short-term liquidity here, so it's okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It does run up into liquidity. Um, so we're using multiple models for our standard deviations, breaker block and advanced gap theory. I do have a video on advanced gap theory. And I'll probably have to put up a video on advanced breaker block theory, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, in terms of, you know, making like, Yeah, I'm going to change my banner video. The focus of this channel is not really... Um, yeah. I really kind of want to just focus on putting out these trading session recordings. For sure. So I think I'm going to customize my channel. I'm going to just mute my microphone. Let's watch this trade play out. Hey guys, it is Saturday, July 1st. The time is 21.50 New York local time. We're sitting with a micro Russell <clears throat> still price chart behind me. In this video, I want to talk about the purpose of this channel. I want to talk about decisions that I've made in my life. I want to talk about why I've made those decisions, about what I want to know, what I know that I want to do with my life, even though I'm not there yet. The purpose of this channel is to give you a raw and unfiltered video journey into some someone, me, trying to become a professional day trader. I know that this is what I want to do with my life. Um, hey guys, it is Hey guys, it is Saturday, July 1st. The time is 21.50 New York local time. We're sitting with a micro Russell <clears throat> still price chart behind me. In this video, I want to talk about the purpose of this channel. I want to talk about decisions that I've made in my life. I realize now it's my desktop audio. Um, sorry about that. I'm watching my own videos and it's just changing around. Um, changing around oh. so we're following the NASDAQ 
to see if this trade plays out. Using standard deviation models, advanced gap theory are the purple boxes and the yellow boxes. Um, red lines here are break, advanced breaker block theory. And we want to see how this trade plays out. As the purpose of this channel is not really the um, like the trading rants or the short uh, model videos, this is really it. Watching these full length recordings. Um, this is it. Hey guys, it is Saturday, July 1st. The time is 2150 New York local time. We're sitting with a micro Russell, <clears throat> still price chart behind me. In this video, I want to talk about the purpose of this channel. I want to talk about decisions that I've made in my life. I want to talk about why I've made those decisions, about what I want to know, what I know that I want to do with my life, even though I'm not there. Ah, uh, it's automatically playing. I'm not trying to do that. I'm messing around with my YouTube channel. Hey guys, it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're watching the NASDAQ here. Uh, we're, lo we're looking at four contracts here, and I think the stop limit is, the stop loss is, is pretty quickly going to go uh, break even here. So, stop is going break even, and now we're looking at trying to get to $159,000, as that will be our profit limit for the Express funded account. Uh, the last time that I had the Top Step Express funded account, um, they were pretty quick with the turnaround. So Guys, we're in a top step trader, step two account. We're using, we are currently sitting at 2.20, uh, 02.20 New York local time. The Frankfurt Stock Exchange is open. The London Stock Exchange will open in 14 minutes. We're looking at two balance price ranges here. Okay, balance BPR number one and BPR number two, where price efficiently traded. We're looking at liquidity below these lows. Okay, liquidity below, the, below these lows. We're looking at a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency over here, an inefficient price delivery here. Okay, price should be drawn to that. So in this pink box here, that is an inefficiently delivered price to the sell side. We're looking at uh, equal lows for liquidity. We're looking at a price rejection up at the midpoint of an order block a run on a rejection block 
We're looking at advanced breaker block theory. We're looking at uh, standard deviation move lower using the point A to point B. So there's a high, that's a low, that's a higher high. That's a breaker block, ICT breaker. And we are projecting that price leg lower uh, up to five standard deviations. We are using advanced gap theory. So we're using this as our breakaway gap. We're using this as our measuring gap. And we're taking the distance from this high to this measuring gap. And our two standard deviations here confirm five standard deviations from the breaker. So those are the reasons that I'm sitting short. And we will see uh, how that trade plays out. We're using a lot of different ICT models here. Um, I'm sure there are more that I could find, but I think that's enough. I think even just the breaker block model alone there would have gotten you there, but uh, if you get pretty skilled with ICT concepts here, you will, you will start to see multiple models um, all telling you the same thing. So, the purpose of this channel is to show you my journey into professional day trading. Day trading is very difficult. You should not listen to anyone whom tells you that day trading is easy. It is not. But it can be done. Oh. We're trading the NASDAQ. It is a holiday shortened. It's July 4th tomorrow. It was a holiday shortened trading schedule. you would like to do the same thing as me here, use my Top Step Refer Friend link. It is in the description box below. Hey guys, it is... Like, comment, subscribe. We're short four NASDAQ contracts. I might have to move this stop back. Yeah, I think it's coming up to measuring gap, huh? Uh. Huh. Alright. Now I'll let the stop protect me. I'll be disciplined. Wait to see how price plays out. Price could come back up to the purple gap here, come stop me out. I'd prefer not to see that. That candle has me concerned. The last two candles would be a bearish order block if we traded below them with some displacement. We're looking at a bearish order block here, basically where my buy stop is. So that is describing a little bit of price there. Um, we're coming down into a bullish order block here. That's not a bullish order block. We're coming into a bullish volume imbalance here though. We're coming into an inefficiently delivered price here. So price might find support off of this uh, volume imbalance. The most important thing about ICT trading is not it's not the PD raise, it's the draw on liquidity. Where is price going? Okay. I'm not going to let this position get stopped out on a whim. I'm just not. I feel fairly confident in my trade and I'm not going to let it get stopped out if it comes up to the sorter block. I'm just not. Uh, we're going to let this thing play out and uh, let this thing retrace against us a little bit 
Uh, that's what we're doing. Yeah, just not letting that thing get stopped out on a on a dumb retracement. I'm not. So we're gonna let this thing play out. Coming up on the halfway point to our London our London session cash open, which is in 34 minutes. This is a video journal of my journey into day trading. It's a video journal entry. Guys, this is uh, no longer an account that you can uh, account type that you can access on top step. I am on step two. They no longer have a step two, but my account was grandfathered in. The good folks over there at top step uh, are going to offer me a two times payout bonus uh, on this account. So that's why we're sticking with it, trying to get funding on this uh, account. I did not mean to make 53 minutes. That, isn't, that was not intentional. Like not at all. Okay. Five minutes, huh? Trading efficiently right now. We could get a black displacement candle lower here that formed a SIBI. That would be a would be an order block if went, if we traded below that open with with displacement with an inefficiency. You can see the price is reacting off this reclaimed uh, balanced price range here. So that's a reclaimed BPR that it's reacting off of, the midpoint of that. They're getting a little bit of a price reaction off that. However, I think that the draw on liquidity uh, should be lower. So, all things considered, I think we are going to work our way through these balanced price ranges here, punch our way into liquidity, um, iron out this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, and I would like to see whether I could get the fourth contract filled, work our way back to new week opening gap. Okay? So the most important thing is not the PD array. It's where's price going? Where does it want to go? What's it reaching for? That's it. That's why these standard deviation projection models using advanced gap theory, using advanced breaker block theory, using new week opening gap, Guys, it's critical. You got to have an idea at least of where does price want to go? Where should it want to go? You know, I don't know if price is going to reach it to my buy limits just yet. I'm not certain of it, but price from the models that I've researched should want to go there. There's liquidity down here. There's an inefficiency down here. It's standard deviation projections confirming that. That's where price should want to go. To my buy limits. That's where it should want to go. That's the key, guys. Not what is the PD array. Those are important. But it's where is price drawing? Where does price want to go? It's going to somewhere. It's doing something intentionally. It's drawing somewhere. Drawing to an inefficiency, drawing to liquidity. It's drawing somewhere. It wants to be somewhere. It takes time to get there, but it wants. It's reaching for something. You have to, you know, really delve into these charts and and find your ICT models and think like, where, where is price drawing? Where does it want to go? And you'll start to see an improved accuracy in your trading. We see here the price wanted to come up and run, run this liquidity up here. And it did. By the way, breaker block. Look at that. Look at that breaker block entry right there. Good God. Look at that. Breaker block right there. Not the first time, not there. The second time. Look at that entry. On that red line, shot right down to liquidity. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful breaker block up here. I mean, absolutely 
perfect. Just look at that gorgeous breaker block. High, low, higher, high, push into higher time frame liquidity. Okay, we get our initial push down into this balanced price range. And just look at the accuracy, guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. Go keep watching T-Trades, though, and Casper. Casper's pretty good, though. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. So, do I, would I like to get big on YouTube? Yeah, but I think the primary income is going to be from day trading. And I'm going to be frank with you. This sort of model of video making that I do, I know it's never going to be as popular as live streaming it. But um, this allows me a little bit more control. I don't have a chat box. I don't have to keep the you know, maintain a stable internet connection the whole time, which I don't have. The big thing is the chat box, guys, and y'all wouldn't like it if I live stream and then I disabled it. And so, um, the value that I am offering you is this. You're seeing me use the models in live price data. I cannot tell you that this is a live brokerage account. It's not but it's live price data. So, do I ever think that just with these video recordings of my trading sessions that I'm ever getting up there to a big YouTube channel? No, I think I'm going to have to rely on day trading. I don't think I, I just don't think that people want to watch this. Really. They want to watch the live streams and I get that. No matter how many times you see me on a video recording, execute a profitable trade. You're still not going to, it's not going to be entertaining to you if it's not uh, live. I understand. And uh, I prefer the recordings, guys. I really do. I really do. I don't want the pressure. You know, I don't. Is there still there's going to be a couple of you that out that are out there uh, that really want to learn you know you want to see ICT's models in use from someone who is actually trying to use it you'll get value from these you will advanced breaker block theory new week opening gap is on the chart advanced gap theory breakaway gap measuring gap standard deviation projections inefficiencies liquidity it's all there, it's just not on a live stream. So the purpose of this channel really is to video journal. It's really not a live streaming channel. Uh, I don't want to be trade copied. And I don't want to answer too many questions in the chat box. Uh, and I want to be able to delete recordings. Not because I'm trying to hide something from you. I'll show you losing trades. Trust, I will. I don't care. I lose trades. Uh, it's because when I start like uh, stuttering, you know, getting off topic, whatever. Well, not even that. If I just feel like the recording is shit, I'll delete it. But I'm pretty much recording every time that I'm trading. not the PD arrays guys it's not the order block where is it going where does it want to go inefficiency or liquidity it's going somewhere guys y'all друзья товарищи 
Это, это, это идет туда-то. Куда-то. Куда-либо пойдет. It's going somewhere. It wants to go somewhere. And it will tell you if you listen. But you don't listen to it. You're too busy watching uh, tea trades stuff and 10-minute and ten minute ICT primer. I like tea trades, by the way. Do go watch his stuff. But can't depend on it, in my opinion. You got to start thinking for yourselves, y'all. And you don't. I've already seen it in the analytics. You people click off after 30 seconds. And then you'll come to me on Discord. And you'll come to me on my... Uh, <sighs> and I realize that... that guy just showed I think that's a bunch of nonsense I really care if he's a top step well uh, I can't despair it's top step I disagree with I disagree with what coach Robert posted here in that volume profile I don't like it I don't like it I'm, I'm glad he made a profitable trade I don't like coach Robert's chart sorry I'm, I'll show you I'll show you. I'm not disparaging him. This right here, with all the volume profile on it, and the and the volume profile, I really dislike it. And I don't know what these big yellow lines are. I can't even really tell what his trade is, to be honest with you. I can't even really see the chart. But I do not like all these... Your, just why are you covering up all the price guy why why are you covering up price you're trading price stop hiding it what is that telling I can't handle it I'm sorry I can't do it I think it's silly I'm not saying he's silly I'm saying this I can't this is what is this guys come on it's silliness you're trading price you're trading price stop hiding price guys uh, I'm sure he's a profitable trader and, and, and all that good stuff but what is this you can't even see the down candles that might just be the image but what is this volume profile guys it's covering up price data with what with noise, with nonsense. What are the large arrows on the chart? Why? What are the rectangle boxes? Supply and demand? Come on, guys. Why are you covering up price? You're trading price. So why would you cover up that which you are trading? I'm never doing it again. I'm never putting this thing on my chart ever again. It's heresy. It's lunacy. The chart speaks to me, and it doesn't need to speak to me with this. It's crazy. Crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Why you would ever need that? Like, why? Why would you ever need that? Indicating to you what? Just crazy. I like Coach Robert, but, oh man, I don't like it. I'm sorry, I don't like his chart, not one bit. I, I, I will never trade like that again. Covering up the price. Bringing some more Discord stuff. Oh man. It 
Guys, these candles got to talk to you. They got to speak to you, the charts. They must talk to you. It's not random. It's going somewhere. It wants something. It's making its way to an objective at all times. It's going somewhere. And it might take it a very long time. It might do a lot of nothing, a lot of trading efficiently before it you know, starts displacing. Give it some time, though. It'll talk to you. It's whispering to me. I'm a chart whisperer. I, I chart whisperer, guys. I'm Caesar the dog whisperer, but with the chart. And I'm not going to cover it up with a big old volume profile and cumulative delta. Why would I do that? What's that going to indicate to me? That this price data, and it's raw and unadulterated form with some boxes on it, Mm. This is art. This is technical science. You don't need to cover up all of your price with uh, a volume profile. It's just terrible. If you listen, she speaks. She'll tell you what she wants. But you have to listen. Yeah. And I think that she wants this uh, sell-side liquidity down here. I really do. I think she wants these orders down here. This new week opening gap. I think she wants to come back down, reclaim this new week opening gap, get into this sell side liquidity, iron out this, iron out this bissy down here, get that all in order, get price efficient. She likes to be efficient. Wants all these point A and point B to overlap with one another. She likes doing that. Make sure that everything is nice and tidy for Wednesday's trading. I don't think she's going to leave anything in any any inefficiencies coming into uh, Wednesday's trading when the when the markets are not holiday constrained. So I think it's going to iron out all of the inefficiencies before then. Yeah, man, she talks. She really does. Y'all cover her up and just freaking you disguise her beauty with all the, the indicators and the nonsense, the volume profile. You know? And, uh, ugh. bad. Really bad. Cover up price with the volume profile. Almost as bad as covering it up with a moving average. Can't believe I ever used to do that. It's just chart molestation. It really is. It's terrible. It's just abusive to the chart. Oh my lord, you put a freaking Bollinger Band on it. I mean, you've really hurt the chart's feelings. You really have. You really have. Put a bunch of Lux Algo stuff on here as well. You're hurting the chart's feelings. You're disrespecting the chart. You disrespected her. You did. You think that going and put all the Lux algos and all the automatic ICT indicator, that's disrespectful. That's what that is right there. It's disrespectful to ICT. It's disrespectful to the chart. It's disrespectful to yourself. Why? You're not going to learn. Only through great suffering will you, will you learn and will she start talking to you. Otherwise, you're disrespectful. All right, we got 15 minutes to the uh, London Cash Open. Yeah, it does. It does speak to you. She talks. She got to listen. 
been too busy flirting around with all volume profile and your cumulative delta and your this and that, throwing moving averages on the chart, Gartley patterns, disrespectful. It really is. And putting on your, you think that putting on that Lux Algo is not hurting you. It's disrespectful to the chart. It is disrespectful to ICT. It is disrespectful to yourself. Why? Because you're hindering your own learning. Lux Algo is not going to give you these standard deviations, number one. It's going to misidentify uh, a lot of nuances in the market. It's not going to hit advanced breaker block theory. It's not coded to do that. And uh, it's not going to hit everything. It's not. And, and it's, what it's missing is, is you're going to you rely on those indicators so you don't have to think. That's the problem. You don't have to think. Price wants something. It wants to go somewhere. It's purposeful. It seeks liquidity. It seeks inefficiency. It seeks to be efficient. That's not coming from Reese. That's coming from the Securities and Exchange Commission. That's coming from uh, everyone. Right? Price is trying to deliver a fair price, an efficient price, more efficient markets. So over time, you don't expect these inefficiencies to remain. You expect them to be ironed out. What do we mean by ironed out? Traded back through. Traded back through. And notice that virtually every single price point, what do we notice? Down and up and down and up. Up and down and up and down and all around. Had a big hole in the chart. That's a big draw in price. Every single price point comes back to it over time. It's in a, that's an efficiently delivered market over time. Okay? Every single price point delivered on the buy side and on the sell side. And do we one day come back down, fill some of this stuff back in? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the NASDAQ is not going to stay up here forever. Notice here. Goes down, right back up to the same spot. 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 It's efficiency, guys. It's what the market is trying to be. Every price point twice. The paint roller over every price point, but you're missing it. It's right before your eyes, but you're missing it. These are fair markets. Why are they? Why is this a fair market? Because market participants had the opportunity to trade, whether to, whether for a sell or whether for the buy, the same exact price point twice or more times. That's why it's fair. That's why it's efficient. That's why price rolls back over itself for efficiency. So it's only a matter of time that we come back down on the NASDAQ. But it will take time. It's not going to happen tomorrow uh, on the 4th of July. But eventually, couldn't, it might not even happen this week. Eventually the NASDAQ will come back and start probably all at once start rolling back over these inefficiencies that we made on the way up. That's what it does, guys. It's a paint roller. Sometimes it's more obvious, sometimes it's less obvious. Daily. Let's go to a daily. Paint roller. What do we notice when price before we made our big expansion up? Look at that. Look at how long. Just paint roll. Just the same price points back and forth and back and forth same price points efficiently trading all efficiently trading efficiently trading most of the time that's what price does efficiently trades so what is this box probably gonna do the last box did it what's this box probably gonna do you see it now Maybe. It might do that. Might not. Might expand higher. We shall see. 
to paint roller guys trying to be efficient go read the CME's website go read the SEC commissioner they want efficient markets and that's what they get delivered with trading algorithms human beings don't do that sort of thing it's not so perfect that's why I don't believe that human beings control this market it's too perfect you don't you think it's not but when you know what you're looking for it is it's too perfect way too perfect human beings have a margin of error and and the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 virtually don't from a mathematical sense the only way that they're doing this over and over and over again is if it's automated in my opinion you ever like looked at some of that AI generated art and you knew it was AI generated because it was a little bit too perfect the ratios didn't quite look human uncanny valley that's it that's it right there that's why I think that the price is automated it's uncanny valley sometimes it feels human but in the grand scheme of things you see that every price point virtually every price point ends up being re-delivered twice it's too perfect it can't be human it's uncanny valley there's no way human beings don't do that they don't they don't perfectly offer every price twice they don't if it were human and not automated it would be wild boom and bust painting way outside the lines big margins of error especially the S&P 500 it's way too perfect it's uncanny valley perfect it's algorithmic it's why it's algorithmic it's automated in my opinion our trading back up in a measuring gap it's a paint roller guys it's a paint roller trying to deliver an, a fair and efficient marketplace not all at once not enough to scare you into thinking that the markets don't move anymore make retail believe that it's all real by the way when I say retail I include big hedge funds people that are trading clients money and not their own they don't care to understand this stuff the guys at Goldman Sachs that are trading clients money insurance companies clients money they don't care it's the clients money why do they care they only got to make their 20 percent a year I'll make 20 percent in a in an hour you know the you, you guys some of y'all think about hedge fund traders I used to think the same thing like well if he or she trades at a hedge fund he's got to be he's got to be uh, smart right and usually they are pretty smart but they're not trading independently they're trading a model that's given to them they're lackeys they're employees bank trader hedge fund trader fund trader they don't have to under they don't have to understand the market on this level because they're not trading their own money now maybe they train their own trade their own brokerage account but at work they don't have to understand the market at this sort of nuance they don't like not at all they they're given a model and they follow it they are employees okay so that's why they you know why the liquidity is where it is because even if they knew that this is how the market works, they don't care they don't care at all they don't care at all it's the clients money it's not theirs all they got to do is make 10%. They can let positions run. You can only let positions run against you a few points. Imagine if you traded a hedge fund. Let it keep going against you. Just let it keep drawing down. Who cares? It's clients money. Well, as long as you can make your 20%, your 10%, who cares? That's why if you want to know where the big money is, just look at the further the high is and the further the stop. The bigger money is down there. It's up there and it's down there. You know, that's where the big money is. Long-term highs and lows. 
And boy, that's why price eventually gets there. Because it's going for it. It's going for the big money. It's not going for the small money. It's going for Goldman Sachs money. That's what it's doing. It is drawn to the big money. It's not drawn to your tiny position it's, or your simulated account. It's drawn to the big money, funds, millions of dollars in stop losses. That's what it's going for. Big money. It doesn't care about you at all. Hey guys, it is Yeah, so I let this position run against me. Uh, went down two and a half standard deviations, got down to this balance price range. Uh, this is not enough to convince me that, that my position is losing. It's not. You know, we did come in and re-deliver the measuring gap. I would rather have not done that. I wanted to see that purple box there. I'll make it a pink box. I want to see pink box remain open. Of course, that didn't happen. I'd like to at least see purple box remain open. We're coming back to that breaker, though. I believe that I've correctly identified said breaker. And uh, that should be resistance. You should find resistance here. That breaker. Yeah, that breaker should be providing resistance now. It should. It should. I'm not saying it will, so it should. The London cash open in 30 seconds. We're going to be put in drawdown. We're going to keep waiting, see if Price wants to react at this breaker. We're going to drawdown. We're at a breaker, should provide resistance. Nothing about my trade has changed. This is, a, I believe this to be a retracement, not a reversal, thus far. There's our uh, biggest open of the day. That's going to be London. Well, New York is there, but only AM. All right, there's the London open. First five minutes, uh, we ran up to the breaker. Want to see that breaker provide resistance? Would like to see price turn lower right here. Why? That's our breaker block. We did trade through that measuring gap I did not want to see. Ideally the measuring gap should remain open. Unfortunately this one got closed out. But the breaker is still there. Liquidity is still lower. New week opening gap is still lower. L lower. So I still have reason to believe the price should draw lower. But it's not cooperating. We got a uh,
Well, it's kind of hopeful, but that's not looking very good. We got a one and a half standard deviation push lower. London Open is now pushing higher. We're pushing into our what I thought was a breakaway gap. It's not it's not remaining open. Um, at this point, really wanted to see that breaker provide some resistance and it reacted there, but it didn't give me the resistance that I wanted. So It's probably a real loss. Yeah. Working up inside that breaker right now. Up to our, what I thought was a breakaway gap. Working up in that. If it doesn't find resistance here soon, we're looking at a lost, lost position. Got a push there up into liquidity, redelivered an old Sibby. Working up into that uh, bear breaker. I would prefer not to see a new high. We prefer to see price turn lower here. Oh, we're getting a reaction. This is good. We redelivered uh, a gap there, which I thought was a breakaway gap. It was not. Well, it was for like a one standard deviation move. Uh, from our breaker block standard deviation projection, that was one and a half standard deviations going on two. I'd like to see three and four standard deviations lower. It might not come during London, I suppose. But I think that that is a lot. I mean, it's not coming under the ultimate lows. So, working up in that bearish breaker right now, working up into it. Yeah, okay, I think it's a good reaction. I don't think it's here. That's a good reaction right there. I mean, let's look at our one minute chart. That was a good reaction right there. A very good reaction at our bearish breaker. Would like to see continued downward action. Five minute chart.
What's price looking like right now? It's okay. This could be better. Um, I'll turn on the camera for a moment. Hello. We're watching price. We're watching the NASDAQ. London session, July 4th, 2023. This is my video journaling of my attempt uh, to get into professional day trading. So. This is a grandfathered uh, top step, step two account. Probably gonna, if I do get funded and I record videos, I will most likely uh, name the videos like top step trading, right? So I'm gonna capitalize on that affiliate marketing. Why not? Well, we tried. We did try. Um, you know, I really wanted to see this bearish breaker, uh, you know, get some bearish reaction out of price. And looking at the one minute chart, it's okay. It's, you know, it's okay. It's not great. We came up and re delivered this little volume imbalance here in the one minute chart. That reaction that we just had there was not good. I don't think. But I, re you know, my trade idea is not invalid. I mean, we're working in this bearish breaker here, and I have a lot of reason to believe that price should come exactly to my buy limits, like exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Yep. All right, we're fourteen hundred dollars away. One fifty-seven, six forty-six. We got fourteen hundred dollars to go. Uh, I could have taken four contracts off there, and and then put them back on. That was probably what I should have done. As I saw that price turned at this balance price range, I should have taken the contracts off, waited, and then put them back on. All right, that would have been optimal. Optimal trading would have been to take these off wait put them back on why let me trade it down into what is this guys guys this is, a vol this is a balance price range right price got a reaction off that it's just to be expected we do expect reactions off balance price ranges Let's see what price is doing. 
coming up and uh, re-delivered this Sibby. Did get a reaction off that. Trading up into a bearish breaker. We're at the London Cash Open, so we have a, an initial rush of volatility in. Uh, I have strong reason to believe that price should want to draw lower to my buy limits. Although the advanced gap theory reasons are not so valid right now because both of those gaps are re-delivered. So I'm actually uh, just going to focus on the breaker. Okay, just going to focus on the breaker unless because those gaps are re-delivered. I really would want to see a breakaway gap not re-delivered. So right now we're just working purely off breaker. Camera's going off. We're kind of live, in a manner of speaking. for me to comment on at the moment. We're waiting. I'm uh, just waiting. I want to see if price uh, does want to turn lower on the breaker. I believe that is a correctly identified breaker. High, low, higher, high, push into liquidity. It should be a correctly identified bearish breaker. Uh, price should want some point within this breaker to turn lower. Uh, but it's not cooperating right now. So it could be a loss. Could be a loss.
Yeah, it's really hot. Okay. Not going to pull this yet. I want to see how price reacts. We're still within the bearish breaker. High, low, higher, high. We're still within that range. Is it looking good? No. No, it's not. But this could be time distortion. This could be trapping, folks. It's possible that this is trapping. It is possible. I'm not saying it is. But ICT hasn't really taught time distortion. But this could be an example of it. This could be an example of price distorting traders' perception, making them think that price is about to break out higher. Most people are, by default, breakout traders. It's kind of like the default retail, uh, which is a really horrible way to trade, and you shouldn't do it, in my opinion. But by default, what most people learn is breakout trading. So the market is in the business of fooling. I believe that that is kind of the nature of time distortion. Speculate. It's moments like this. It's trapping people thinking it's about to break out higher. Could be wrong. It could actually break out higher. Kind of doesn't feel like it though. Kind of feels like this might be time distortion. And we should just wait. Four contracts here is probably too much. Probably should be three or two. Yeah, it's probably too many contracts. It's really not doing much, but it's kind of making you think it wants to go higher. And maybe it does. Maybe my analysis is incorrect. But I don't think so. Not right now. I'm not thinking that. Right now, I'm kind of thinking my analysis is correct. We'll see. We haven't traded out of that bearish breaker yet. We're still in it. We're still in it. Still in the bearish breaker. High, low, higher, high. Assuming that price point A to B here is our breaker. So A to B is a breaker. It is, uh, you're pretty much respecting it. I'm not really seeing it disrespect that yellow box.
So that's our breaker right there. It's point A to point B. We don't want to see closes above. Yellow box is a bullish, a bearish breaker. Point A to point B. First leg. I don't really want to see price close above that. I did get one attempted push. That was not a close though. We have not closed above. I closed above the yellow box. So optimal scenario is I took those four contracts off on the first push. And then put them back on. That'd be five hundred. Yeah. In the future, when I have enough money to trade my own cash account, I'm just going to trade one account at a time. I really believe that that's optimal, not flipping back through charts. So, uh, with that in mind, I'll probably do top step and trade station at different times of the day. Which seemed like the most reasonable conclusion because I don't really want to be flipping back and through tabs. I just want to focus on one chart, get really good at trading one chart. Because you can always just up the number of contracts, guys. Like, it is what it is. So, it's going to be one account at a time. That's what it's going to be. I'm not going to do top step and trade station at the same time. I flip back and forth between the tabs. I don't want to do that. I don't think it's good for my development. So in the future, when I have money again, I can trade my own, my own trade station account. I will uh, probably just end up putting up separate streams of uh, trade station. And that's when I'm, you know, not working on a top step. I want to lock in the profits for top step for a day, go over to my trade station. That would be kind of the ideal scenario. Keep the business day going, keep trading, but Lock in the top step. That's kind of where I want to go. So, uh, work by night on top step a lot. Work until work until I feel like the top step is in a good spot for the day. Then go over to the trade station. And make uh, separate streams. <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be really any benefit for me to even date these recordings. I'm probably just going to name these videos now like super generic. Not even date them because it's kind of pointless. It's kind of pointless to date them. No one watches older videos anyway. You get all your views in the first hour. So. 
probably just pump out a lot of videos. And just uh, rep top step and trade station. Well, I can't rep trade station, but you know, I'll put I'll just put like trade station futures trading, and I'll do top step 150k combine trading. I feel Matt does it. Yeah, I'm going to do super generic names. Longer names don't do any better. I'm kind of just going to make the YouTube channel secondary. Uh, just focus on recording these as video journals, and if people want to watch them, Okay. People don't want to watch them. Okay. I think for the most part, I've said enough with my trading rants. It's kind of now time to execute. It's kind of time to stop ranting. It's time to execute. Show that I can do it. And... You know, just really use this YouTube channel as my video journal, like I said I would, and just execute on that. So, I don't think I'm ever going to be a big YouTube channel because. I'm not uh, like putting up a bunch of flashing lights and stuff. Just recording trading. That's it. It's recording trading. Sometimes these positions can go on for a long time. Long time. And uh, we're sitting in one right now. Sitting in a London session uh, trade. <laughs> Bearish breaker block here has been respected thus far. Let's break that down into quarters. And we've been mostly respecting, well, mostly respecting the 75% of this bearish breaker, but. Looks like we might uh, get stopped out. Yeah, I really thought we were coming lower. I really did. Uh, it looks like it wants higher though. Probably reach up into this buy side liquidity up here. And up here, like I was saying earlier. I guess that's a little bit disappointing. Low, high, lower, low. That's a breaker. Yeah, that's a breaker right there. Low, high, lower, low. And breakers on both sides, huh? Mm -hmm. Five standard deviations. That would take us to our buy side here. Yeah, I think I missed our. Yeah, I think I missed it. Yeah, I think this thing wants higher. Really, had a lot of reason to believe that it wanted to go lower. Man, I really did. Unfilled inefficiency up here. Liquidity targets. We had a lot of reason to believe the thing was going uh, lower. 
but we do have a bear we have a bullish breaker here we have a low for the high or lower low it pushed into some short-term liquidity standard five standard deviations would take us to this buy side yeah check out the six standard deviations man I got a balanced price range down here. Oh man. We covered in all of our inefficiencies here. This thing wants to go higher. That really sucks. I think I'm just going to have to straight out reverse this position. This thing's no showing no willingness to come lower. So. Bullish breaker, balance price range. I'm gonna put my stop loss right there. I, I, man, I really think that thought that this thing wanted lower with a breaker, liquidity draw. Sell side inefficiency? New week opening gap? Wouldn't this thing want to come lower? You know, we do have a bullish breaker here, though. Low, high, lower, low. Push into some short term liquidity over here. That's a bullish breaker. Um, so that would also take us up into buy side liquidity up here. Either way, I think it's getting ready to make a good move. I'm about to reverse reverse this position, but not yet. I'm not I'm not doing that yet. Let's give it some time. swings. Ay, ay, ay. Time distortion? Maybe. About to rip higher? Kind of thinking it's about to rip higher. Man, we also had this bearish breaker. Would that be a breaker? High, low, higher, high. That's definitely a breaker. That will take us down there. It's kind of the two scenarios that I was seeing. Two breakers. I'm seeing nothing but breaker. That was a bad close for the bearish side, for my position. That was a very contra position. That was a very bullish close. The five minute chart. It was not, it was no bueno. Price needs to turn lower right now. Or we're getting stopped out. It needs to turn lower right now or, or it's stop time. Let's just let the stop play out. I'm not going to touch it to the stop. Oh boy. Oh yeah, these inefficiencies are not re delivered. Let's see, that's a, that's a breakaway gap, huh? Right there, is that breakaway gap a 
have a real difficult time with price right now. That's probably a breakaway gap. That's probably not getting re-delivered anytime soon. We're probably looking at switching along, taking a loss, getting along. Yeah, this is going to be stopped out. That's going to be 500 loss. Uh, we're, we're going straight long five. And we're aiming for six standard deviations higher on that breaker. Let's just, just run this uh, liquid over here. Puts us at 157.026. We've got $2,000 to go. We're now at a loss on the day. Uh, we thought that price was going to come down into new week opening gap, into this open inefficiency liquidity targets lower. Uh, the market has proven us wrong. We've got a bullish breaker here for them, and our standard de deviation projections would take us above this high and this high. So we're about to go rip some buy side liquidity now, I think. About to go major spool higher, I think. All right. Eleven standard deviations, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah, this thing really wants to go higher, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just see what $2,000 is on five contracts. 2,000 divided by 20 divided by 5. We need to make 20 points. Plus 56, 76. Sign on commissions. That should get us funded. Over seven standard deviations. That might take some time. But I think we're coming to... Yeah, that's too perfect. That's exactly our prior high. Wow. Wow. 11 standard deviations higher. Okay. That should be funding. too perfect. It can't be human. Uh, so what I just did there was a standard deviation projection from our uh, bullish breaker. So from low, high to lower, low that dipped into liquidity. I then took that same amount of price action and applied it higher. And our 11 standard deviations takes us exactly to this high at 92 evens. And that, that exactness is um, what would tell me that that is, that is salient. I think that's going to happen. It's too exact. It's too exact. So let's see if midpoint of that lines up with anything. Let's go with blue. They were probably looking. Yeah, it's all kind of lining up. So, I think we are spooling higher by a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, that's what we're doing. We took a loss there. I hate taking losses. But uh, I was clearly, the market proved me wrong. We were not going lower. So I ate that $500 loss with commissions, 550 bucks. But uh, I think we'll make that back. We're looking pretty good. Y'all can't see that 11 standard deviations from that point to that point is that high. Nine standard deviations is the midpoint between this black candle's the wick from the wick high to the candle body on the five minute chart. I hope that makes sense. Point A here to point B times 11, 11 standard deviations is up here exactly. And it's also the uh, nine standard deviations from point A to point B, nine standard deviations higher, is the midpoint between this wick high and this candle body. Both of those are algorithmic signatures that that's where price is going, wants to go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take my sell limit off short of that, though. Just seven and a half standard deviations higher which would take us above uh, Monday lunch liquidity and then I think we're drawing uh, higher so I think it's about to kick up in gear next hour is looking good for some movement I think Yeah, that's a pretty uh, crazy thing I just did there. But there it is, it's mathematics. Yes, sir. It's exactly that high. 11 standard deviations. Exactly. Not one takeoff. And it's exactly the consequent encroachment. That's that's an algorithmic signature if I've ever seen one. I think price wants to spool up higher. Hit going to the buy side here pretty soon. It should start accelerating in the next hour, I think. Yeah. Yeah, as it is. All right, I want to listen to some good stuff.
Yes, sir, I think the price is going higher. Oh man, good old scam sandwich. I think the next hour should be a big green candle. Next hour. Next hour should be a large green candle. got our bearish or sorry our bullish order block standard deviation projections let's check and see if we've got advanced gap theory uh, breakaway gap here okay no measuring gap So we have an open inefficiency here that uh, is a good sign that price wants to go higher. But I don't see, oh, there's a measuring gap right there. Okay, so that's advanced gap theory, um, that's advanced breaker block theory, and then the purple boxes are advanced gap theory. Uh, blue lines are consequent encroachment of this wick, that's an inefficiency, and then buy side liquidity is up here. It's very unlikely to want to get 
So buy said liquidity in the overnight session. But I think we start to draw higher. I really was thinking lower, but I don't think it's high. I'm pretty confident we're going higher. Advanced gap theory is pink box and pinks this open pink box inefficiency, measuring gap, and then measuring that out. That's advanced gap theory. I am so tired I cannot continue so I'm gonna upload this I'm sorry um, I'm gonna put a stop loss in the market hope for the best <laughs> I'm too tired um, alright guys bye